Welcome to the Nightly Rant with your hosts, Mike and Toria. This is the show where we examine society from a sarcastic point of view. If you like insane conversations, this is definitely the show for you. Let's get into today's topic. YPN people, I don't know about you, but I love helping out a friend. That's why I want to shout out my friend Brian Little and his podcast, Your Favorite Blockhead. This is the only show that manages to weave together peanuts and MMA into one heck of an amazing podcast. You can find Your Favorite Blockhead wherever your favorite podcasts reside and at yourfavoriteblockhead.com. Do me a huge favor and listen to Brian's show. You'll be entertained and you'll help out a friend. Now, as I said, let's get into today's topic. Don't you hate it when people don't understand you even a little bit? So all people, pretty much, with Mm -hmm. the exception of like four? But don't you hate it like when they act like they know who you are, but they really don't know anything about you at all? It's all 100% assumptions? Yes, they make me kind of want to throat punch them a lot. But who are we talking about? What are We're we talking, talking about? We're talking about um, more shit going on with the Buena Park homeless shelter oh, Jesus issue. Christ. This is never going to end. And crazy loon bag women uh, making assumptions. And um, then, honestly, some very nice, very different. This is why I say this city, way more normal than the other city that we won't talk about right now. <laughs> way more normal. Because... Yeah, there's people who they think, oh, you're a jerk or you're, you know, you're wrong. Great. I'm glad you think that because there's also these people over here who are like, oh, no, you're right. You know what's interesting to me? I can't remember what I was going to say. I, I had something interesting and I was trying to hold on to it and then you kept talking. Well, where I, I was going it. with this <laughs> is that you're entitled to your opinion. You're entitled to your opinion, but you really need to try to back up your opinion as best as you can. And then... Beyond that, don't go calling people racist. Yeah, that's kind of fucking rude. And, you know, today, today. you showed me a I message. I was so offended. We, we had gone to a Starbucks to work today because we had a lot to do. And ironically, I feel like I got less done at Starbucks today because of their stupid internet. Now but, we've learned we can't go to Starbucks when it's raining. But in any event... um. This dude, this dude messaged us about uh, two or three months ago asking for a shout out. And bro currently has 150 people following. So he had less than, and like we talked it over and it was a no. Like, and then we kind of made a rule that we only give shout outs to people who've been a guest on our show because, you know, we appreciate you coming on and giving us some content and your opinions and maybe being sassy with us, it's always fun. And so we're going to promote you because it's awesome. Anyway, so this dude, we said no. And he never said anything else about it. At all. Until fucking today, when bro decides to respond to my Happy New Year comment, like, I don't know, a month and a half after I made it? And say, like, fuck you guys and a bunch of middle fingers... And I'll specify that they were black middle fingers because it's actually relevant to the story. Yes. And then saying, like, white people be gone, white people or something like that was his white hashtag. White people being white people. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, we don't give shout outs for uh, people who haven't been on our show, so whatever. And I, like, sent him a thumbs up because I'm a racist, obviously. Yeah. My thumbs up was white. Because I'm a racist, obviously. Of Huge. And, <laughs> and then he comes back and he's like, yeah, all of your guests have been white. Which they haven't. So, nice try. Yeah. Um, And, like, keeps going on and on and on about how we're racist because we didn't give this stupid asshole a shout out. And you know what? And that's why the account that has over 4,000 followers should care one bleep what... Uh, I think we have thirty. A bro with one hundred and fifty followers. Have I think we have thirty one hundred right now, just for accuracy's sake. Okay, same difference. <laughs> I know. Like we no, really no. should care what he thinks. I really don't. Like I was just okay. 
being called a racist when I've done nothing to deserve it is that hot button thing for me. It's that thing. It makes me immediately well, enraged. Well, okay. We've talked about something like this before when we talked about the uh, the sign stealing issue. You know. Yeah. People say that person is a thief because they stole signs. Right. And then some supporters of that person, because that person is ethnic, <laughs> they try. See how hard it is to be politically correct? It sucks being politically correct. Forget being politically correct. So that person is Korean. And so their Korean supporters immediately say to the person who, by the way, I'm going to repeat what they said, that person is a thief because they stole signs. Right. That's it. That's all he said. You're a racist. What exactly is racist about saying someone who steals signs is a thief or you're a thief because you stole signs? You're a thief because you committed a crime. Huh. I wonder how that works. Oh, wait a second. By definition, a thief is somebody who has committed crimes. Oh, look at that. Right. What the hell is wrong with someone that they jump right to the, oh, you're a racist. And that's exactly, come on, ask me, ask yourself a question. Seriously, we are not talking about our account has 3,000 followers and his has 2,000 or 1,000 or 1,500 or even, God dang it, 500. We're talking about a person who has 150 followers. My guinea pig page has more than 150 followers. My personal and I post on it too. once every year and a half. My personal one does too, and I never post anything. Like, come on. That's what I'm trying to talk about. And, and you know, people say, well, why are you laughing? You know, the, lots of people have that many, and they don't do anything to do it. Exactly. They're not dicks. Exactly. But when you're trying... Yeah. To build a following and you only have 150, what does that say about you? So, so. My election page, an unknown guy, had more than 150 Instagram followers. A politician who was an unknown person had more than 150 followers. And this guy is going to get pissed off. But, but, but hold on. Hold on. So now we're talking about a huge gap. This is where we got to go with this. But somehow that makes us racist that we don't right. want to shout him out racist because it's so wrong now i I get it you know what like i said if we had three thousand and he had two thousand maybe he could try to say well the only reason he didn't shout me out is because i'm black he can ask literally anybody else and he could say that shout out and he could say that though but but that still doesn't make it true but i what i'm getting at is that would make a lot more sense than hey give me a shout out no response from us then a happy new year from us. And then a, yeah, I'm fucking racist. Rah, 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 rah. Right. No. Right. You don't get to do that, bro. We did not bring up race. We did not consider race. And to be quite honest with you, I totally remember the conversation we had. And I totally remember looking at his profile. Uh -huh. And I totally remember going right back to the message, reading it and being like, I'm not even going to respond to this. It's, it'd be too rude to say no to that request. Right. So at the time, we weren't savvy enough to be like, oh, 20 bucks. That works really well because you add, when someone says, hey, shout out for shout out, and you say, you look at their page and they got like 250 followers, and you just I just respond back, sure, no problem. But but based on our based on our current rules uh, with our page, it's 20 bucks for us to do well, that. Well, and that makes sense because – I okay. I've put a lot of work into our Instagram page, a lot of work. Yes. I respond to people myself. I answer messages. Sometimes you answer messages. I interact with people on all that good stuff. I put a lot. Oh, and of I'm going to tell you something. That should be when you put your VA page together. Case study. Exactly. Bingo. So anyway, I don't think that somebody should be able to just message me, provide me zero value. And me give them the benefit of all my hard work. I don't think that's okay. I think you need to offer value. And that's why it's okay for our guests. Like the other, there's another guy that messaged me asking for a shout out. And I, I said, no, I said, it's only for our guests. And then I posted a week later that post asking for guests and he's got our link. We're just waiting for him to book. 
he's going to be on our show. He's from the UK, though, so it's kind of hard for him to... Where's the thing? So now I'll give him a shout-out. Here, here's the thing, though. The Valley. Five, probably three times you have heard me do the video for how to be a great podcast guest, right? right? And, you know, I talked about that on Elite Podcast Academy. Everyone should go to ElitePodcastAcademy.com and subscribe on iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher or um, Anchor or Spotify or any of them. Even I've learned they're, something they're listening there. to your okay? podcasts lately. But, but the bottom line is you want to be a good guest. You have to bring value to that show. Um you have to, you know, you have to first be like yourself, you know, when you're trying to get a spot. Right. If you're coming at us for a guest spot, be yourself. You know why? If you make us uncomfortable to the point where we know we're not going to have a good conversation, we're probably going to turn you down because you're just not a good fit. Right. But if you just make us a little bit uncomfortable because you're different than what we're used to, as long as we think we can have a conversation with you, we're going to bring you on. That's how discriminating we are, guys. Like, we go from like zero to 10 million miles and everything in between. And we've, it's only the fringe areas that we say no to. We've had a vast range of people want to be on our podcast, and we've said no to none of them. We've had some who wanted to talk about topics that well, we thought were going to be kind of boring well, and hold turned on, out to hold be on, awesome. Hold on, hold on. Today, we got one that I'm just not going to respond to. He, he took his message Don't, back. Well, yeah, but I mean, he doesn't know that we know that he asked us that, but we know that he asked us that. Yeah. So anyway, the proof. I personally think that's a BS feature. I do too. Um, because, the... because, okay, hold on a second. Just to be real brief about something. What if somebody was, what if that time when we had that falling out with that bro that claimed he was our friend and then acted like a piece of shit. And then uh-huh. when you defended me, he acted like an even bigger piece of shit. Uh-huh. What if he had the ability to message you and say whatever the fuck he wanted to and then delete it? And if you didn't think about screenshotting it, suddenly I say to you, what? He said, what to you? You better call the police. The police are going to say, do you have proof he said that? Yeah, Instagram, you screenshot literally everything in messages if you ever think it's going to bite you in the ass because yeah. they let you revoke the messages. It's stupid. So I have I have two more things to say. Okay, but I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt You're you, good. but that was important to get out of my head. Good. Two more things. One, I absolutely love our Instagram followers. They're A plus people. And two, I do too. The proof this guy is clearly a fucking idiot is the fact that I posted about this on Instagram. And the picture I put up was kind of funny. I mean, it says the difference between pizza and your opinion is that I only asked for pizza. And if you know me at all, that's funny because I always ask for pizza. Anyway, and now I get this little notice on the bottom of it from Instagram. This post is doing better than 85% of your recent posts. Yeah. So thanks, Instagram followers. I like you too. Yeah. That's my things. It's, it's one of those things, though, that I think people... Well, it's like our good good consultant friend always says, you know, people will talk about you. And so you kind of have to put a thing in your contract if you're doing consulting for them that they aren't allowed to talk about you to the media. Right. And he says it's not to hide. It's because, you know, think about this. You have people who are fairly close to somebody mm-hmm. and they're close enough that they think oh you know if something big happened that person would tell me i mean we're, we're tight right but then whatever happens is sort of for whatever reason it feels extremely personal or whatever so that person will only share it maybe with their spouse significant other boyfriend girlfriend live and lover whatever the hell right uh-huh. and that's the person they're going to share with and then maybe they're like immediate immediate family like their mom and dad Sister, brother, you know, that kind of thing. Not aunts and uncles even. Just right. Just closest family. Um, if grandparents are alive, you know, grandparents as well. But these other people think that they know 
And so they go and talk to the press. Oh, yeah, well, no, that's not really what's going on. What's really going on is, you know, da 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 Exactly. Now that person has created a problem because they go out there and act like they're your spokesperson. Uh-huh. And then you tell the actual truth of what happened and it contradicts what they're saying. So then they try to tell, say that you're contradicting yourself because, after all, your representative made this statement and you contradicted your representative. But yet that guy's not your representative. And so that's why he makes – he you know this guy has that in his contract. I'm going to have it in mind when I do consulting because – I don't want people taking what I say and thinking they know everything and then going to the press and talking about me. On a similar level, that is why no one but you and I manage our Instagram. Yeah. Because out of everywhere, that's where we engage with our people the most and other people. And I don't want anybody else having... And that brings me back to that stupid catfish season. They're at it again and they haven't been on in like two weeks. I know. I'm just are they trying it. to kill the show? Like, really seriously, are like they I've, trying to kill the show? I really love that show, but I'm kind of over the shit. Well, like, okay. I think that the whole having a new host, co-host each time... It's fine. It's brilliant. And then they've had the one chick back twice. Um, it's what they did when Neve was... Name. Neve's wife was having her baby. Yeah, and then they had Neve's wife on, too. She was really cute on there. Really cute. That might be why they're on hiatus right now. Well, it very well could be, okay? And maybe it's not planned, and maybe it's just a set of bad circumstances, but... Well, because his wife is, was pregnant. The I bigger sure problem is they it. shouldn't have done those stupid hundreds, top 100 BS episodes. Nobody would have Those mad. were stupid. But I'm curious to know if anybody else is mad. Like, am I... Are, are we the only two that are mad? And annoyed with what Catfish has done for the last two seasons? Seems that way. But then again, I don't hear people who used to talk about it talking about it. Okay, people. If you're a Catfish watcher and you're annoyed or not annoyed, you need to send us an email. I have to know. Or an Instagram message. I'm cool with that, too. Where do they send emails to? You you have to say this part. Why? Because I can never remember what the email address is. It's so simple. <laughs> well, what's, what's our website address? I don't know. Come on. <laughs> okay, so apparently the email address is info at yogispodcastnetwork.com. See, that's what I was getting at. Is I could understand if you didn't remember the info part, but you had to at least remember the at yogispodcastnetwork.com part. And the Instagram, which I've already clearly stated in this episode is a direct line to both of us, is yogis underscore podcast underscore network. Underscore best underscore podcast underscore network underscore in underscore the underscore world, but nothing after network. First network. That's too many underscores. Can you imagine? I think that. I actually think it's too many characters for Instagram. You know what drives me crazy? Everything. The people who have like underscore underscore underscore. I know. Like, come up with. Because then you can't tell. Because then you can't tell if it has. Two or three, three or, or six four or, or seventy four or what? Like, exactly. What the fuck? So then you have to like try and copy it. Yeah, that's not always possible. But Listen to us bitching about the stupidest shit. Listen I know. to us. We're bitching about how social media platforms work. Something that's entirely free and is helping us build a business. Well, I wasn't bitching about how social media platforms work. I was bitching about the stupidity of people who put multiple underscores in a row. It has nothing to do with Instagram. People have been underscore whores for we a long time. We did bitch about Instagram making messages threads disappear. Oh, like that's a super massive stupid idea. Yeah, I think they were trying to be kind of Snapchatty, but they shouldn't try. They shouldn't just stop. Twenty-four hour disappearing stories are disappearing enough. Yeah, it makes me a little crazy when I go try to find a picture of Odie and she hasn't posted a story. I wonder if his name is still Odie. I think it is. When she texted me, she called him Odie. Well, yeah. She said she was going to keep his name Odie. Anyway, apparently, Ramen slash Duncan is doing fabulously. Is he? Not even apparently. She sent us a freaking video of him, like, jogging Dingus. around the house. You saw it earlier, Dingus. Well, he wasn't jogging. He was, he was jogging. Crawling. He was not. Even you said he was moving faster. She's got him on some kind... This dog has gone from being like, I'm a almost dead little outside dog 
to getting like decent care with us where he was getting like the food he needs and the supplement and like the, the medication he needs and getting his infections taken care of to be gone to like golden pillow Kingland where he's getting like all the joint supplements and they're taking him on like special walks. They've got him on an exercise regime. But I was thinking about something as you were saying all that. These are the people who had an 18 year old female dachshund. Uh huh. And then they got the current dachshund uh-huh. male. Uh-huh. Now he's four years old. Uh-huh. So they got him when she was 14 years old. Then she passed away just like last year. No, I think they got their young dachshund before they got the old one. I don't think they had the old one for a oh, long, okay. long That's period of time. Well, in any event, all I was going to get at is they've had the older one. And they probably gave the older one all these joint supplements and all that oh, stuff. And they're totally used to taking care of an older dog. I think they're and just I the think most they wonderful really, people. I think they really like that. And that's kind of like their calling, you know, like right. spiritually, they're getting completed by taking care of older dogs. I think and it's I, lovely. And I get it. I get it because I feel really good <laughs> doing the fostering of the dogs. I feel really good. And you know why it works so well? Mm. Because the rescue we work with doesn't pressure you to take on more than you can take on. It's it like, okay, when some many other rescues I've been at, when you see someone with two or three or four or more dogs that are from the rescue, uh-huh. so they're fostering, 90% of the time you know that the rescue coordinator pressured them into taking those dogs by telling them they didn't have anywhere else for them to go. Right. But this in our rescue, rescue probably 100% of the time you see it, it's been that person's choice to take on those animals. So we have to say that if you're in the Southern California area and you are in the mood for a dachshund, you should get in touch with Dachshunds and Friends at dachshundsandfriends.org. And if you're anywhere and you just really love wiener dogs and you would like to donate to make some wiener dogs very happy then you should also go to dachshundsandfriends.org and shoot them some dollars. Don't forget about Mickey. Don't forget about Mickey. Mickey was owned by a, he's a male, he's like 11 years old, he's a male doxy, he's black and gray. He's cute as shit. And he's super cute and he has like a little crooked little face. And his pops was a homeless man out in Ranch Cucamonga. And the rescue was helping him. They got him all nursed back to health, got all these problems taken care of, and now he's on a special diet, and he has this like sweet potato and salmon or something like that. Yeah, he's eating the other brand and of that. Just super food expensive, and so they're looking. A month. So they're looking for donations for that as well. You know, every time we add up to one hundred and fifty dollars, that's another month that Mickey gets to eat his special diet, and he really needs that special diet. And he's been doing so well. Well, and then on that also diet. Also, let's take a minute to talk about Buddy, because Buddy was oh, yeah. four, and his spine was injured, and his owner then, because his spine was injured and his back legs were paralyzed, turned him into a shelter. And so... Yeah, and then the rescue took him, and some wonderful vets helped get him a nice surgery to clean it up. Then they said he could probably rehab. Yeah, so he started his physical therapy, and as you can imagine, his vet bills have been astronomical. Like, Crazy what was that. his surgery, like 7000 before the yeah. discount or something? And the vet gave him a decent discount, so kudos to the vet. But, so also, if you want to see him or you want to see his story, you can see a lot about him at the Dachshunds and Friends Facebook page sure, or on sure. dachshundsandfriends.org. Correct. Correct. So, there you have it. Uh, Dachshunds and Friends Rescue. We're allegedly getting a new foster pooch named uh, Butterbean. Butterbean. Don't worry. He's the cutest little demon I have seen from Comes the rescue. Comes from Mexico. And so our Instagram will be inundated with pictures of Butterbean and Yogi being in love. Because they're going to be in love. We might have a new logo. Our logo might be two dogs instead of one. <laughs> and we were supposed to get another rescue dog from somewhere else. But another rescue kind of snagged him from us. Did you ever call in on that? No, because I told you that I was going to call in after they'd already closed. Oh. <laughs> My bad. Well, I think that Pretty Girl thinks 
that Yogi thinks that it's... Good night, everyone. Hasta la bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Nightly Rant. If you enjoyed the show, please give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Google Play. If you didn't enjoy the show, please just ignore that previous request for a rating. This has been a Yogi's Podcast Network production.